Hey, what's going on everyone? Ronnie Landis here and I want to bring you the first video to a series of videos called Activating Genius. And this video series basically just came about um, over the last few days. I've just been meditating on how I wanted to approach YouTube and putting out um, video information content out there and you know I've been kinda hesitant to actually put out a lot of consistent information only because there's so much saturation of nutrition, health, raw food content out there and I just didn't really feel very motivated to kinda like throw the same old rehash stuff into the mix so I've been doing a lot of writing a lot of blogging obviously I have my book that I just put out there and that's kinda what I enjoy doing I love doing public speaking but I got really inspired by this idea of activating genius as a video series and this video is going to get into the core concepts and the foundational principles of this series. And the, the series is basically about nervous system and brain development. That's, that's a subject that I've been very excited about. I've been very interested in over years and years. And definitely the last year or so, I've been very into how to develop neurological capacity how to develop brain cognition and actually how to fine-tune the electrical conductivity of our nervous system for maximum optimization so we can become our full selves so we can be able to do anything learn new skills lightning speed um, rap repetition I mean just to really fulfill our human potential so let's get into it uh, as a disclaimer, I want to say that this video and the videos following it are not an attempt to promote an overnight solution. There's no real kind of like supplement or pill or magical food that you can eat that's going to give you the, the, golden, the golden ticket per se um, to, achieving, to achieving your goals in this area. Um, what I do want to say is that I want to present strategies, I want to present information that if applied consistently will create an accumulative effect, meaning that if you if you apply this in a repetitive manner in a daily discipline, it will accumulate and that will build results in the near and long term future for you. So it's a step by step integration of the information. Um, okay, so this is the main idea for launching this series is that it's based on something called neurogenesis and neuroplasticity and in the field of neuroscience there was an old paradigm that basically said that when you're born you have a certain amount of brain cells that you get when you're born and that's basically what you have until the end of your life it's simple it's similar to the idea of metabolic enzymes or your enzymatic bank account where you're born and you have a certain amount of life enzymes and as you go through life you're depleting it by the stresses of life and the metabolic process and um, eventually you're going to deplete the, that enzyme cascade. It's very similar to our brain cells. Well, what science has found out in the field of neuro neurology is that something called neurogenesis has appeared where actually the brain is able to repair neurons and um, actually rebirth neurons. So, th so um, nerve cells or neurons and brain cells that we've lost over time can actually be repaired and replicated. And so it, it brings this interesting idea that nerve cells that wire together fire together. And we can actually pattern interrupt thought forms in order to create new neuro networks that are aligned and that are conducive with actually who we're trying to become in the world. So old thought forms um, that have been patterned and formatted out throughout our life based on numerous factors um, are not our genetic disposition or a genetic destiny as Bruce Lipton likes to say. This has a lot to do with epigenetics. Epi meaning outside of us. Um, so you know the, the field of epigenetics is really interesting to me too where our genes do not dictate our future. Meaning that 
factors outside of us like our associations, our emotional state, the food that we put into our mouth, which is a huge focus of mine since I'm a nutritionist, um, and our environmental settings has a lot to do with switching on and switching off certain genes in our body that promote um, a different genetic expression, otherwise known as our phenotype. And the other part of this is neuroplasticity. And that's basically the brain's ability to form new neuron connections and learn new abilities, as well as repair and self-regulate damaged areas of the brain, which I spoke about earlier. This, is, this right here is super exciting to me, and it should be really exciting to everybody out there. I mean, we've, we're in a situation where we're literally exposed to the most horrendous chemical experiment known to man through our atmosphere, everything that we're breathing in, um, the toxic food experiment, otherwise known as the standard American diet that we've, we've um, been indoctrinated in since day one, has had massive genetic effects on us. It's damaged our brain uh, cognition, our ability to think clearly and make rational decisions and to think creatively and innovatively. And now we're learning that we can rewind and reprogram and start to create new possibilities for ourselves. Um, so I want to just talk about a few areas of the brain that are critical for this process to take um, to take to take hold. So um, let's get into that. Areas of the brain to take note on: the cerebellum. The cerebellum is responsible for planning. Uh, physical balance and coordination, movement. Um, the frontal lobe of our brain right here is primarily responsible for, similar to the cerebellum, of intent, execution of our intentions, um, making, making um, solid decisions to follow through on a decision, um, and filtering out information as it pertains to verbal expression. So you know people that you know, you say like, oh, that person has no filter on their mouth. Well, I think that probably has a lot to do with the frontal lobe um, functionality. <laughs> That's just a theory of mine. But when people are just like, uh, just spurting stuff out, there's no filter there. When we think a thought, but we don't necessarily verbalize it, um, that has a lot to do with the frontal lobe health. Um, there's something called, in the midsection of the brain, it's called the basal ganglia. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. But that helps with the regulation of energy. So, um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, if you have great energy, most people need a cup of coffee or some kind of stimulation, maybe tobacco, um, nicotine, to get them going. Well, that has a lot to do with the midsection of your brain and the proper regulation output of of energy and also this part of the brain has to do with voluntary and involuntary movement. Um, the hippocampus which is probably the most interesting actually and it pertains to neuroplasticity and neurogenesis and the formation of um, new nerve uh, uh, neuro network is that it's responsible for memory retention. One area of focus for me over the last couple of years as an educator and a researcher in the field of health is that I've been really interested in um, how to retain more valuable information, how to, how to kind of let go of information that's not really serving me or serving other people, and how to really, you know, organize it in my brain in a way that makes sense and how I can, I can express it out to people. That's very important to me, and I think that's important to a lot of people. We're, we're in the age of information, and we're flooded and saturated with, from, um, with information from all ends of the spectrum, so... Um, this is very. This is a very important area. Also, the hippocampus, the hippocampus is responsible for short-term and long-term memory, as well as our ability to learn new information. Um, so this goes right back into um, basically the foundation of this is neurogenesis, is our ability and neuroplasticity, our ability to not only repair damaged. Uh, brain cells, but to also increase our ability to learn new information and to learn new abilities um, and actually master abilities. There's a quote that I like um, and I kind of added on to it, which is, you're never too old to learn something new and you're also never too young to master what you've already learned. 
and um, that seems to be true. We can master all kinds of abilities. We can literally compound talents and skills and abilities on top of each other, and we can keep learning, and we can keep learning more effective ways to master information, to master these skills, and to incorporate it within the fabric and the framework of who we are and um, make it authentic to who we are. Um, there was a, something I want to put out there before I move on with this is that there was a study done in 2009 that showed that elderly adults who were more physically fit that had a bigger hippocampus and a better spatial memory than those who are less fit. And my, my, you know, I grew up as an athlete um, since I was about four years old and a martial artist. And it's interesting that that's not actually my main focus anymore. My main focus is in the field of nutrition and the field of raw food nutrition. Um, and I, I like to focus on that as, as my main vehicle for getting um, accelerate human potential information out there, but it's very important that we create a holistic view. So in this video series, I'm going to be talking primarily about nutrition, but not entirely. I'm going to be adding in a lot of different elements and areas. Um, things that help brain cognition into increased neuroplasticity are active movement, consistent exercise, our environmental surroundings, um, playing brain games like stuff like chess, pool, card games. Um, there's all kinds of different like brain games, games that stimulate um, brain activity. That helps us build new neural networks in what's called the myelin myelination of our nervous system, which I'll be getting into at a later time. And of course, nutrition, which is going to be my primary focus. Okay, so that is, um, in a nutshell, the basis for this video series. And to give you a little sneak peek at what we're going to be getting into um, throughout the videos, these videos are going to be very um, organized and very specific to the subject. And an example of each video that I have laid out so far is that the next video that we're going to be doing is um, on myelination. This is the nerve fiber network insulation, the myelin sheet that insulates our nerve fiber and actually allows us to learn and master new skills. We're going to get into mineralization. We're going to get into macronutrient ratios, otherwise known as metabolic typing, and how to balance and dial in our proteins to our fatty acids to our carbohydrate ratios that work primarily for our biological um, individuality. We're going to get into brain fats, uh, identifying critical fats for the brain nutrition and fats that we need to avoid. Uh, detoxification, which is going to be really interesting. Um, internal terrain modification, cleaning out our internal terrain so it's more conducive to the overall function of not just our organ system, but also to the brain. Uh, we're going to get into grounding and electromagnetic pollution. Our nervous system is basically conducting electrolytical impulses, and we need to be connected um, to the electromagnetic grid of the earth that's pulsating negative ions through the earth, and that's actually acting as a battery pack for our nervous system and, at, and also we're going to talk about electromagnetic pollution that's inhibiting that electrical conductivity. Uh, spring water actually is something we're going to talk about. I'm a spring water hunter and um, I over the years I have noticed incredible strides in mental cognition and these other areas by drinking spring water and actually drinking hydrogen rich in structured water. We're going to get into that. Water that is in formation contains information. Interesting idea. Um, we're going to get into this concept about zeta potential. We're going to get into hormones and understanding our androgens and our estrogens. We're going to get into calcification, which is critical for, for uprooting the, the deterrents that are, that are um, creating stagnation in our nervous system and other issues in our tissue matrix of our body. And then we're also going to get into attitude and emotional states that um, increase or decrease 
our you know our capability as as human beings so that's pretty much what's laid out so far I might add on I might tweak it out a little bit but that's what you can expect this is the activating genius introduction and building the nervous system and brain so I really hope you guys are as interested and fascinated in this subject as I am and uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback and putting out more videos for you guys take care